After I cut and fit every wall and ceiling panel, it's time to apply the marine vinyl. Every panel was installed in the van before this step, so I know that the panels are the correct size and that I know every screw hole is in the correct position. Then it was time to cut the marine vinyl for each panel. That's what you see happening here. Each edge is one and a half inches oversized. I used the two by four to quickly make this measurement and made all of my lines with a piece of chalk because it won't show through the marine vinyl. Chalk. I cut each piece of vinyl for every wall panel, attempting to make the best use of the vinyl. After I cut each piece, I label the wood and the piece of vinyl with a piece of colored tape. Having multiple colors of tape is a good idea. One color labels the panel to the wall and another color labels the panel to its piece of marine vinyl. It's important not to fold the marine vinyl. Roll it. This is also very important when you purchase the marine vinyl. Be sure when it's shipped to you, it's rolled and not folded and put in a box. Getting the creases out can be very difficult. I'm putting the marine vinyl on this five millimeter plywood and you'll notice that I've marked everything and this has already been coated with a mixture of 50% mineral spirits and 50% polyurethane. After that, what you see here is the mold killing primer. That's on the back side. On the front side will go the marine vinyl. And as I said a few moments ago, you can see all kinds of labels. This is number 25, MV stood for marine vinyl. And I pre-cut all the marine vinyl pieces and labeled those so I could match them up. For me, it was just easier to go through and cut the marine vinyl to the size I needed, make a pile of those. And then when I got that completed, start putting it onto the five millimeter plywood. So, I have done this with the spray gun, and you'll see that. I don't think the spray gun or the settings I have are optimal, and the spray gun has spit out the contact cement, but it seems like it's almost dry when it hit the vinyl or the wood. So I would back up that spray with putting it on with a brush, because I want 100% coverage. One of the reasons this doesn't have mold killing primer on it is I want to make sure that the contact cement sticks and adheres to it really well. And also this contact adhesive is very mold resistant, so it will protect us against the mold. Now the way I'm doing this is I pre-cut the marine vinyl and then I place my piece of wood down on it and I use this pencil and I go around and mark where the wood's going to be. There's a real specific reason for doing this. And that reason is I want to put the contact cement on that area first and then apply it to this piece of wood. After I've done that, I can put the roller and roll it out nice and flat. In order to do that, I have to flip it over. And I don't want contact cement all along the edges because then it's going to stick to my table or my paper. So this has been working out really well. It's been a really good method for me. Please understand, there's lots of professionals out there who may do this differently. I'm just telling you how I'm doing it.
that doesn't mean it's right. But down the road, I'll report and let you know how things hold up. So please subscribe. See? You have to forgive me for that little commercial. All right. So I'm sure I'll show a video of a spraying and spraying basically just spit. I know I'm using a lot more contact cement doing it this way, probably more than I need to, but I don't want to do it again. So I'm coming up with a system here that I think is going to be the best for me. I got to take my label off because I don't want to glue the label in. And it is a cloudy day in Central Florida, which is nice because even though it has rained, the humidity is kind of low, so it's pretty comfortable. And how could the humidity be low when it had just rained? Well, if you've ever lived in Central Florida, you know how bad the humidity can get. All right, I get this thing fully covered with a thin coat of poly, or thin coat of poly, a thin coat of contact cement. Then I do the same thing to my wood piece. And they say in the instructions to let it dry for five or 10 minutes. And that's what you should do. But honestly, I don't wait that long. Because if you let it dry for the full time that they want it to dry, the moment it touches, it is going to be an amazing bond. And you're not going to be able to reposition it. And that, I have discovered, can be a big problem. The marine vinyl is very forgiving, but it'll only stretch so far. And if you pull on it too hard, it stretches and then it doesn't go back to its normal form. And you end up with wrinkles. And I don't want that to happen. Okay, I don't want it to happen again because it happened on one piece. And yeah, no, you're not going to see that video because I didn't videotape it. That was the experiment. All right, so I got that covered. Now while I was doing that, This has dried up pretty good. And you notice how it's gotten a little wrinkly there? And that's just from the drying of the contact cement. So it won't stay perfectly flat. So then I'll take this, line it up on my lines approximately, and I'm pushing down to try to flatten it out as I go. And since I didn't go all the way to the edge, now I can flip this over and you see the bubbles, got to get those bubbles out. And since I didn't wait the full five minutes, that contact cement has some forgiveness and it'll let me push those bubbles out. Boy, I wish I had done this on the experimental piece. Now, I also was concerned, what if I got a little contact cement on this white marine vinyl? If you work on it and get it off really quick, it'll roll off just like rubber cement. But if you let it sit there too long, it'll eat right into it. So you don't want to do that. I experimented with some scrap pieces to discover that. Okay. So I'm happy with that. So I'll get it with the roller. Thank you. 
see there's a little bump right there. There's a little bump right there. The reason that bump is there, that's where a screw is going to go in. Because on that side, you can see there's that little screw hole right there. So any blemishes will show through, but that's being overly picky because when it's all done, the only person who's going to see those few blemishes is probably going to be you. But we always do the best we can. Okay, so now that I got that done, now I'm going to cover this area and the wood. And you'll probably see the marine vinyl will start to curl because as this dries, it pulls in. And this part, I will let it sit for five minutes because this part I'm just pulling over and pulling it tight and it's not going to be a problem if there's a wrinkle. Okay, I waited five minutes, and you can see in that five minutes, this is curled. So in that five minutes, what I should have been doing, I should have been cutting my corners, which is what I'm gonna do right now. But it would be a better practice to do that while you're waiting. So for the corners, I cut out on each side. Let's bring you in close for that. So for the corners, I cut out on each side and then make it nice and straight. Don't need that much. So now I got this tab that I can pull on, pull it tight and pull it over. And now that makes my corner. And there's enough stretch that it does a really good job. Then. I can pull and just push this down and just do that all the way along. So after I do that, I need a little bit of contact cement on here so that when I pull this over. So while I'm working down the line, I put the contact cement on here and then I'll work down the rest of this line and come back and then do this side. tight and push it down and I went a little too far on this side because I got to do my corner And like I did down at that end, I'll add a little contact cement to this side. And then while that's drying, I switch over and go to this side. But what I've learned is I should go do my corners first and get my corners cut out of the way so I don't make that same mistake I just made starting to fold things over all right so I just take that stretch it pull it over push it down makes a nice corner and then I start from this side
Right on that one. And then while that one's working to dry that contact cement, I can work on this side. But I got a complex corner over here. So let's check that one out. So how am I going to deal with this? Well, I'm no expert, but I can show you what I'm going to do. This is an outside corner, outside corner, inside corner. So I already know how I handle outside corners. Like that. Like that. I kind of cut that one out a little too far. Should have gone over there. Should have gone in a little further on that, but I think it's okay. Because, thank goodness, this stretches really well. So, now I'm going to go to this other corner, get a little closer to the corner, pull that in, pull that in. Doesn't need to be that crazy long. Pull that up. And there we go. Now the inside corner, basically going to do the same thing. I'm cut a little strip really close. And the distance that you stay away is the thickness of the plywood. In this case, five millimeters. But of course, you're not measuring; you're doing it by eye. And if I did hundreds of these a day, I would get really good at it. And I pull that over, and that gets my nice rounded corner. And I'll pull this over. That's nice and tight. Pull that over, and that's nice and tight. If you see this, it pulled over and it covered that edge a little bit. If I was really good at this, I would have cut it a little bit less and it would cover the whole edge, but that's pretty good. The corners here worked out really well. Everything's covered. So I should have been a little bit further out, but that's okay. It's never going to be perfect. I want a super good bond, so I'm going to hit this with a little contact cement. And I can do that because over on this side, I would already put it on there so I can work on this side and work my way to the other side. And since I'm a slow old man, by the time I get there, that contact cement will be dry enough. There we go. And now I just have this one side to do. Make it nice and tight. Now let's back you guys up a little bit. So you can kind of get the full picture here. So this is the completed panel. The last thing I have to do is take my roller and flatten out all the edges. Make sure these guys stick. That is a completed panel, and I think it looks pretty good. There is a little dot, I'm not sure if you can see it, 
right here, a little bump out, and that keeps bothering me, but that's where a screw is gonna go to hold this panel in place. So it's funny how those little blemishes that nobody else will probably see kind of bother me. But once I put it in, there'll be a white screw there and it'll all be good. So that's how I'm doing my vinyl panels. Once again, I'm no expert. I'm just showing you what I'm doing. Seek professional assistance with everything and make sure you have really, really good ventilation when you're doing this because the fumes that this contact cement gives off, it's nothing to fool with, all right? So I'm gonna do the rest of them. And even though it's a windy day on the hill and it's beautiful weather, I'm still gonna turn my fan back on.